Um, I was doing s some research for many, many years about my own family, and we have an archive assembled which was exhibited in 2001 in Munich in the Jewish Museum. Currently, that uh, archive of our family is located in the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. And following all this, I became interested in uh, following the ho Holocaust uh, events. And after I became consul, I was even more interested what happened to the Jews in Poland under the German Nazi occupation. And in the course of my own research, I, I got to know Mr. Abi Herz, who is a very Hasidic Jews, Jew living in Zurich, not far away where I grew up. And I got to know him and he told me that he has documents from Rebbe Eis, which is the grandfather of his wife. And that these documents are at the at that present time located in Jerusalem. I don't know exactly who created the name a Bernese group. I think it was uh, Mr. Ambassador Jacob Kumoch. Um, but the, the Sternbuch family, Recher Sternbuch, and also the other Sternbuch, uh, were not part of our research. They had their own archive, which was once transferred to United States, but as, as I have heard, it was destroyed by a fire. So, in our concept, the Bernese group consists of Alexander Ladosh, his deputy, um, Rinievich, and then Mr. Uh, Rotziki, the consul who forged the passports actually, and Mr. Kuhl, and that's what it actually is. They were actually the diplomats, and they are the Bernese group. They were in Bern. For me, those four people are the Bernese group. Well, I don't think so. They did the utmost they could do under the circumstances they were in, because they were diplomats, but not 100% diplomats recognized by the Swiss government. And they had to protect their own lives, because just imagine if and when the Nazis would have occupied Switzerland, they would be exterminated immediately. So I think they did really the maximum, what they could, especially uh, uh, Consul Rokitsky. Rokitsky, it's difficult for me to pronounce, sorry. Well, initially there were not so many passports issued, and the Germans, they were not stupid. Suddenly so many Jews from Paraguay, I mean, they were having hundreds of passports. They didn't believe it anymore. They didn't trust the scheme. So then it stopped. As you might know, there were even passports sent from Switzerland for Jews who have already been deported and to Treblinka and exterminated. Those passports arrived in Warsaw in the ghetto, but the Gestapo confiscated them, and you surely know about the Polsky, Hotel Polsky affair. I cannot tell you exactly. On the one hand, some officials apparently were bribed so that the passports could be smuggled or documents proving Paraguayan citizenship were smuggled 
so various means from Switzerland into the ghetto. So they must have been bribed, but I have not seen ever any documents. That's just hearsay. Because we don't know really how did those papers come into the Warsaw Ghetto, for instance. I know about the Judenrat in Sosnowitz, in Oberschlesien, in uh, Benjin, or the German called it Benzburg, uh, Sosnowitz and Katowice. There I know from a document, which I have seen, that it was uh, Mosek Merin, he was the chief, and he intervened with Mr. Schwarzbaum, who cooperated in Switzerland with Mr. Silberschein to stop his actions. This document we have. Everybody know, knew a little, heard a little, but nobody ever had any witnesses who participated. Nobody had seen any documents. Uh, until we discovered it, apart from the fact that my friend Jeffrey Zimbler, he apparently um, already had some information and documents in the 80s. But what was in the 80s, at least it didn't reach Europe. I don't know how public it became in America. No, it didn't become public. So actually, it slept until I started to dig and I wanted to know more. And by my position as an honorary consul, I had some more leverage. I wanted to make this story public in Switzerland with the Jewish community. Why? Because I wanted to show my Jewish friends that there were Poles who assisted to save Jews from the Holocaust, because uh, the Jews generally, not knowing Poland, they are against Poland. And we know the whole story about the Holocaust law. So I wanted to show them, but I didn't have the means to do it. And I tried to give the story to earlier uh, ambassadors who came to Bern, but they were not so much interested either to know about it. They had other interests until uh, the present ambassador, His Excellency Dr. Kumoch, he showed interest. Initially, he didn't believe my story, but the more I spoke with him and the more I was able to show him documents, he said, we have to publicize that. And we started to do this exactly one year ago.